Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's workshop. My name is Michelle Jones, and I am so excited to have you here with us. And I'm equally excited to have Amy Hannes with us and Kaylee Anderson. Um, Kaylee's going to be doing a workshop with us on the secrets to achieving health goals and how to make them stick. And I don't know about you, but I have trouble making good intentions stick. So this is this speaks to my heart. I'm looking forward to learning more, Kaylee. Before we turn things over to Kaylee, I just want to introduce her to you. Um, registered dietitian Kaylee Anderson specializes in supporting women on their wellness journeys. She's the founder of the site Plant-Based Mavens, a hub for women and the healthcare providers who care for women to get evidence-based guidance on plant-based nutrition and cooking, hormone health, fertility, pregnancy, intuitive eating, and lifestyle medicine. Kaylee is certified as an exercise physiologist and intuitive eating counselor, and she has completed training in women's integrative and functional medicine and herbal medicine. Kaylee is board certified in lifestyle medicine and serves as lead faculty of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine's Food as Medicine course. She is secretary of ACLM's Women's Health Member Interest Group. She is the author of the Plant-Based Nutrition Quick Start Guide and has co-authored two lifestyle medicine textbooks, including the first one on women's health called Improving Women's Health Across the Lifespan. Kaylee, I am so glad to have somebody that is so well-versed in women's health as well as health in general. So thank you for being here with us. I'm going to just turn things over to you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I am excited to be here with you and excited to be here with all of you that are joining us live today. And I'm, I'm so glad you're here. This is such an important topic and it is so top of mind for a lot of us this time of year. So I'm excited to talk about goal setting and I'm gonna try to make this pretty interactive. So you, uh, I'll give you some little bits of homework along the way. So make sure you have a pen and paper or um, you, know, you can just reflect on these things if you don't have the ability to write them down, that's okay. So let's dive in. So first I wanna know how many of you set goals for 2024? Just let us know in the chat, yes or no? Yes, Carolyn says yes, Rosalina says yes, lots of yeses, couple no's. All right, well, I see primarily yeses coming in and uh, you're not alone if you set those goals. Uh, there are, were about a third of Americans who set goals this year. And why do we do that? Why do we set goals? Why are they important? Well, goals can help us give, uh, give us a clear direction and focus. They can lead to increased productivity. They provide structure. They provide uh, improved chance uh, that you will succeed at whatever goal you've set. They boost motivation. They help build momentum and they help align your actions with your desires, which is really important. And they make your health vision seem doable. So if you're thinking, wait a second, Kaylee, what's a health vision? What does that mean? So let me explain that one. So your vision or what we at Full Plate Living call your health vision statement describes the highest health vision that you have for your life. And if you think of your health journey like a map, then your health vision is the X on that map. It's your destination. And it's something you can return to while you're on your health journey to remind you of where you're headed and why you're doing everything that you're doing. So what does that have to do with goals? Well, your goals are like these individual stepping stones that lead you to the X on the map. So they're obviously very important part of this whole thing. So before you start walking, you have to know where you're headed, right? So before you set goals, you need to craft your health vision statement. And this usually takes the form of a short paragraph that describes that highest vision that you have for your life. 
So to narrow in on your health vision statement, here's a few things that can help. First, identify your main desire for your health. So the thing you want more than anything. When I think about people that I work with, I hear things like, you know, I want to eat healthier. I want to uh, I want to, you know, get rid of my diabetes, or I want to lower my blood pressure. Those are all common things that I hear. Or maybe it's, you know, you want to have more energy, or you want to be able to play with your kids or your grandkids without getting out of breath. So it could be a, a variety of different things. The second piece is to imagine how your life will be different if you achieve that goal. So what would that look like if you achieve that goal? What would a day in the life of that person look like? And then the last step is to distill this into your health vision statement. So I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of reflection on your own health vision statement. But first, let's look at a couple of examples so that you get a better idea of what we're talking about here. So here's, a, here's one example. I am a healthy, happy person who makes time in my life for myself, my spirituality, and my family and friends. I walk every morning to start my day on the right foot and to relieve stress. I feel confident in choosing foods that keep me healthy, and I can easily bend down and pick up my grandchildren and play with them outside. Here's another example. I am losing weight and feeling at peace with my body. I'm on vacation with my family and I feel energetic and free. I'm wearing clothes that make me feel good and I can keep up with my active kids. Healthy eating and daily exercise is just the way it is. I don't even think twice about it anymore. So notice how these two people were pretty specific about what they desire their lives to look like. And they are speaking in the present tense as if their highest vision was their current reality. That's a really important piece of this. Because did you know that imagining something happening can activate and strengthen regions of the brain involved in the real life execution of whatever it is that you're imagining? So that's why athletes will spend time visualizing the ball going into the net or visualizing winning the game. It activates the same parts of their brain as if they were actually making that shot. So you've probably felt this in your own life. You envision something that you're excited about. You're, you have a vacation or a trip plan that you're really excited about, and you think about it and you can feel the excitement welling up in your body. And the opposite is also true. So if we think about, you know, a public speaking uh opportunity that we have ahead of us or a difficult conversation. We can just imagine those things and that perceived stress actually starts to manifest physically, right? You might get sweaty palms, you might get butterflies in your stomach, you might, your breathing might change. So these things actually affect us physically. So spending time crafting the highest vision you have for yourself and your future really coloring in the details of it and spending time in that imaginary world. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Is a scientific way to start bringing it into reality. So I'm going to go back real quick to this, and I want you to take just a minute to reflect on your health vision statement. So later on, when we're done with this workshop and you have time and space, I want you to spend more time than we have here today really coloring in the details, but let's just kind of get the bones uh, started on this. So thinking about your main desire for your health this year, what is the thing that you want more than anything? And then start to kind of picture and feel what that would be like if you had achieved that goal. And then later on, I want you to really distill that into your health vision statement. So I'll give you a moment here to reflect on that. And if you feel called to feel free to throw your, you know, biggest desire for this year into the chat and share with others. To normalize my weight to lose 10 pounds. to get moving, to have more energy, to get rid of the sugar addiction. These are all really great desires to become healthier and feel better in my clothing, 
this is this is great and and these things you know you can you can think about what it would be like if you were on the other side of achieving that and what that would mean for your life so if you you know achieved let's see here to get moving or to have more energy what does more energy mean in your life what does that mean for your for your relationships for your work for the things that you enjoy doing what kinds of things can you do that you feel like you can't do now so maybe there's a vacation or a trip that you want to go on or something else that you want to do in your life a new hobby you want to try and if you had more energy you feel like that would be more possible in your life so see how we start to kind of paint this picture and really amplify whatever that desire is into the rest of our lives and the things that matter in our lives. Okay, well, thank you all for, for those of you who shared. And again, I want you to come back to this, but we are gonna move on. Okay, so now that you have your health vision statement started, let's talk about your goals. So these are the stepping stones that'll get you to that health vision, right? How many of you have heard of SMART goals? You can let me know in the chat. Probably a lot of you, yes, lots of yeses. Um, and they might seem cliche, but they're cliche for a reason because they actually work. So SMART is our acronym for the recipe for goal setting. So we want every single goal that we set to include each of these components. We want them to be specific. So what exactly do you want to achieve? We want them to be measurable. How will you measure your progress? We want them to be attainable and realistic. So can you actually achieve this goal and is it realistic for you? And we want them to have a time element. So what is the deadline for achieving your goal? So let's do a little bit of practice with this. So here's an example. So in this example, the person's desire is to eat healthier. And that's pretty broad, right? But I hear that a lot. People come in and say, I want to eat healthier. I want to eat better. I want to, you know, eat more vegetables. I want to feel better. It's okay to have kind of a general desire, but it's hard to take immediate action on that, right? So turning it into a SMART goal might look like I will eat one 75-25 plate meal every day at dinner for the next seven days. And uh, if you are familiar with full plate living, you all are kind of in the full plate living community, so you know what a 75-25 plate meal is. So this turns that broad desire into a really specific goal that this person can take action on. So is it specific? Yes. Every meal at dinner, we could even make it more specific by saying, you know, we're going to eat these specific recipes at these meals. It's measurable, so we can track the number of, and the, even the composition of these 75, 25 plates that we have set out to eat. Is it attainable? So this one will vary person to person. So if this person is traveling all week, then maybe not attainable to do this every night. If they are home and they have the time and energy to cook their meals, every night, then yes, this probably is attainable for them. Same with, is it realistic? This one can also vary, but essentially we're doing a check to make sure that it's a bite-sized goal, that we aren't saying we're going to eat 75, 25 meals every single night for dinner for the rest of our lives, right? That might not be realistic. Uh, we're making it something that we can actually achieve in this time frame, And it has that time element. So we're doing this for the next seven days. And that's very clear. Okay, let's look at one more example here. So this example, the desire here is I want to start healing my diabetes. Again, really common desire to have. I want to lower my blood pressure. I want to lose weight. You know, we have these health goals and that's great, but they're very broad and it's difficult to take immediate action on. So we want to turn it into a SMART goal that we can take action on. So an example of that would be, I will stroll once around the block after dinner every evening this week, Monday through Friday. So it's specific. We know it's once around the block. We know that it's after dinner. It's measurable. We can track the number of days that we stroll. Is it attainable and realistic? 
again, we need to take into account our personal resources and limitations to assess this, these two. And then it does have a time element. So we know that it's Monday through Friday of this week. Okay, so now I want you to practice setting a SMART goal based on your overarching desire that you use to, to get started on your health vision statement. So what could be a SMART goal that you could take action on related to that desire this week? And I'll give you a little time to do this. If you wanna put uh, your goal in the chat, feel free to do that. Eat more protein, adding more vegetables to my plate. So how could we turn adding more vegetables to my plate into a SMART goal? Let's use that as an example. So that is more specific, right? Then I want to eat healthier, but it's still a little bit broad. So what does adding more vegetables to my plate look like? It could be this week, Monday through Friday, I will eat uh, carrots and bell pepper strips for a snack every afternoon. Or it could be three days this week, I will start my dinner with a side salad. So how can we make these, you know, really specific? Great, I see a lot of other great, great ones coming in here. I will start each morning with a two mile walk over the next seven days. Yep, that's great, Michelle. Awesome, you guys definitely have the hang of setting SMART goals. So it's great to set the goal and then really walk through the, the acronym to make sure that you have checked all the boxes and you're really setting yourself up for success to achieve this goal. Okay, so you have your health vision statement, you have one SMART goal to get started with, now what do we do? Now let's move on to talking about how we make this goal stick. So first I want you to anchor your goal to your vision. So again, your vision is your touchstone that you keep coming back to. So ask yourself, how does your goal relate to your health vision statement? So if your goal is to eat more vegetables and you've narrowed that down into, I'm going to start every dinner this week with a side salad, how does, what does that have to do with your health vision statement? Maybe your desire was to have more energy and you feel like eating more vegetables is a path to that. So again, you can anchor that salad that you're eating at dinner into something that's really meaningful. Have more energy so that you can spend time with your family so that you feel really good and excited about life when you wake up in the morning. So see how we take these things like eating a salad before dinner and really anchor it into things that are meaningful to us. How does it bring you closer to your vision? So how is this acting as a stepping stone to bring you to your vision? Does it embody the person you want to become? So this is a really important one and we'll talk a little bit more about this later as well. But thinking about your health vision statement as your new identity. So is this goal something that helps you kind of put on that identity and wear it and, uh, you know, and, and really embody that identity? Is it something that helps you feel the way you want to feel in your life? And this one is, is really important as well, because if, you're if your vision includes a lot of quality time with your family, if you sit down and write your health vision statement and it's I want to be able to spend time with my family and feel good and not be distracted by, you know, food and dieting. And I want to have energy to spend with them and not be distracted by, you know, the way my body's feeling. But your goal requires you to spend hours at the gym, then you might want to rethink your goal to align more with your vision. So if you're spending hours at the gym, it's going to be hard to spend quality time with your family. So see how those things kind of uh, are at odds with each other. So maybe you create a goal around family bike rides, or maybe you create a goal around exercising while your baby naps so that your goal is better aligned with 
your vision of spending quality time with your family. So we want your vision and your goals to feel really connected. We don't want your goals to end up taking you further away from the life you want to create for yourself. Next, I want you to build a little bit of momentum towards your goal. So the new year and this time of year when we're setting goals and everyone's all excited about it and uh, you kind of feel like the whole world is on this path with you, it's an easier time to kind of build momentum. So how can you build momentum yourself towards your goals? So we can do this in a few different ways. So the first step is why is achieving this goal important to you? Again, anchoring it to your health vision statement and making sure that that is really sound and you're really clear on that. Step two, what can you do right now to move towards achieving your goal? I want you to think really, really small. So maybe it's go throw brown rice in the rice cooker so that you're one step closer to a healthy dinner tonight. Maybe it's Set your gym clothes out tonight so that you're one step closer to getting your work, your workout in in the morning. So it's what are these little tiny steps that we can do to get us closer to remove friction and just make it easier to just sail right to our health vision statement. So can you kind of see how we're taking this broad, big health vision statement and narrowing it down, 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 down into little tiny steps, things that you could take action on right now. You could watch this webinar and put rice in the rice cooker. So I want you to think that simple when, when we're thinking about this. Step three for building momentum is thinking about the obstacles that you are likely to face. So obstacles are just part of the journey. They're going to come up. So make a list. What are those obstacles that are going to get in the way of you achieving the goal that you just set? So maybe it's going to bed too late and then you don't feel like getting up for your workout in the morning or not making a grocery list. So then you go to the grocery store and you're just throwing things in the cart and you don't really have a cohesive plan for the week. So what are those obstacles? Start making a list of those things. And then once you have your obstacles, you can move on to step four and think about a backup plan. So how will you prevent the obstacles from happening? Or what's an acceptable plan B? So for example, if cold weather, you know, every everywhere across the country in the United States is experiencing all kinds of crazy weather recently. So if cold weather gets in the way of you taking your daily walk, how can you get some movement indoors? So make a plan for that because when you walk to the window and you see, uh, you know, see the weather outside or you check the temperature and you're like, mm, I'm not going on my walk today. If you don't have a plan B already set up, there's a lot of friction to getting that going. You know, it's where's my yoga mat and what online video can I do? And there's a lot of steps that have to be taken right there. And it's really easy to say, I'm just not working out today. It's there's too, it's too hard. So having that plan B in place where you know, oh, I booked Mark bookmark that workout video that I can pull up on my computer. I know exactly where my yoga mat is. I'm going to lay it out right here in the living room and do 20 minutes of exercise inside. See how that makes it achievable to hit your goal that day. So think about ways that you can either pivot or ways that you can prevent an obstacle from happen happening. So maybe you need to set boundaries with yourself at night, maybe set an, a bedtime alarm so that you know, you know, okay, I need to go to bed right now at nine o'clock or I am not going to feel like exercising when I wake up in the morning. So having those plans in place is going to make it a lot easier for you to achieve your goals. So I'll give you a minute here to walk through these steps. I really want you to focus on two, three, and four. We've spent a bit of time on that anchoring in the health, health vision statement. So what are tiny little steps you can take right now? If eating salads before dinner is the goal, could you wash the lettuce right now? Could you chop the other vegetables right now? Could you build the salad without the dressing right now? So what are those little steps you can take? And also focusing on three and four. So making that list of obstacles and a little backup plan or a plan B for each of, of those. I'll give you a minute to do that if anyone wants to share in the chat. Walk on my treadmill instead of going to the gym. That's a great 
you know, days when you don't feel like going outside, you don't feel like leaving the house, you don't have time to get to the gym. That is a great pivot. Set a bedtime alarm. Yes, Michelle, that is very helpful. It's easy to get caught up in things. Stop eating the leftover cake, Jean says. So if that's something that's standing in the way of achieving your goals, if you're kind of thinking in the, the negative or the opposite, so not doing something, how can you think of it in the positive? So not eating the leftover cake. So how can we think of that in the positive? So maybe it's, you know, put the left, wrap the leftover cake in uh, foil so I can't see it. And, it. and when I open the fridge, it doesn't uh, call to me when I see it. Or, um, you know, give the leftover cake away to a neighbor, something like that to think about an action that you can take to help. Okay, so I want you to spend time, more time with that, but we are going to jump in to the next piece here. Okay, so you are sailing along, hitting your goals, feeling great. Now what? Now what do we do? So we need to introduce kind of a next phase of this or add, add something to the picture here. So the next phase of making your goals stick is turning them in to habits. And your vision is your destination. So your vision is the X on that map. Your goals are the stepping stones that take you to that X. So then your habits are taking that entire map itself and putting it on autopilot. So your goals are second nature and your health vision statement is just who you are. That sounds pretty wonderful, right? So think about driving somewhere. If you have to get from point A to point B, you know where you're going, you know the destination, but you don't know how to get there. So what do you do? You enter the address into your GPS or into Google Maps or something like that, right? So then when you do that, because you don't know where you're going, you have to be really aware, right? You got to turn the radio down and listen to the lefts and the rights and make sure that you're following along, following directions. So that's what it feels like to work towards SMART goals, right? It does take a little bit of effort. We want to break them down into something that is so achievable, so small, so doable, that we are, remove a lot of that friction. But the truth is you are doing something different in your life. So it's going to take some effort and some thought, some awareness, some planning. That's expected. But when we shift into habits, those stepping stones that once took a lot of conscious thought and awareness become a well-worn path that you could walk with your eyes closed. So you don't need the GPS anymore. You can just crank the tunes, be on your way. You know where you're going. You know how to get there. This is what it feels like to turn goals into habits. A little quiz for you here. So what is the number one reason why people fail to build a habit. What do you think it is? A, they start too small. B, they start too big. C, they lack willpower. Or D, they lack knowledge. So let me know in the chat, A, B, C, or D. Lots of Bs, lots of Bs. Some Cs, some Ds, some As, a little bit of everything, but mostly Bs. And that's, that's the right answer. So the answer is B. They start too big. And that's why we want each goal that we set to represent just one small doable stepping stone. And that doesn't mean there won't be other stepping stones that we'll take. And you can take some of them alongside each other. Some of them you might need to kind of put on the back burner and build up to. That's okay too. But they're small and they're doable. And that's how we build that path to our health vision statement. And this is one of my favorite quotes uh, from one of my favorite books, Atomic Habits. It's a great book to read, especially this time of year by the author James Clear. Performing a habit is a vote for the type of person you want to be. So every time you perform a habit, 
and really you're performing the goal first, right? It's a goal that you set first and you're working towards it. And then over time it turns into a habit. Every time you do that, you are voting for that person that you described in your health vision statement. And I think that's a really powerful way to think about all of this, that every little tiny action is a vote for that bigger dream that you have for your life. I put this banana brushing his teeth here because brushing our teeth is a habit that most adults have on autopilot, right? It's one that we don't really have to think about. We just do it so much so that if in the middle of the day, someone asked you, did you brush your teeth today? You're like, I don't remember doing it, but I know I did it. <laughs> it's, it's that easy and that much on autopilot. So I have a 10 month old son and he has eight teeth already. So teeth brushing is something that we are just starting him off on. And it's not easy to brush a 10 month old teeth. It's definitely not on autopilot for him. So my husband and I, you know, are helping him build that habit by doing it for him every night. So with that in mind, you know, here are two keys to habit success. So the first is starting small, as we've talked about, smaller than you think. So very, very small. In the book, Atomic Habits, James Clear gives the example of wanting to build the habit of going to the gym every day. And starting as small as driving to the gym parking lot and leaving so that you just start building that habit of going to the physically going to the gym parking lot after work every day. So that might be a little unrealistic, but think small like that. So start with one meal with a fiber food. Start by walking for just 10 minutes. If your goal is to walk for an hour, start with just 10 minutes to start building in that habit. Start by cooking one healthy meal that you already know how to make, not one that has a lot of barriers where you have to learn new skills or learn new ingredients or follow a recipe. Just what's one meal that you know how to make, make that more often, right? So in the case of my son and his teeth brushing journey, we have a little silicone toothbrush that fits over our finger. And if we get that thing in his mouth at that time for three seconds, that is a victory. <laughs> We're not asking him to brush his teeth every day, two minutes in each quadrant as recommended by dentists, right? We're just starting really, really small to build that habit over time. And, you know, likely he's gonna build the habit of brushing his teeth. That's one that we've all built pretty easily. So we know that that is coming for him. We just have to start really, really, really small. The second key to habit success is making habits about your identity. And I've alluded to this a little bit, but asking yourself, how would the version of myself in my health vision statement act? What kinds of habits does that person have? So a great example of this is someone who wants to quit smoking and they're asked by another smoker if they want a cigarette. So they could respond in a few different ways. One response is, no thanks, I'm trying to quit smoking. And while that's the truth, that it's not anchored in the identity or the vision that they have for themselves as a non-smoker. So another option is to say, no thanks, I don't smoke. And that is an example of them embodying their desired identity as a non-smoker. So how can you put on the suit of your health vision and embody that person in every little it every little step that you take in your life. So how would that person navigate the grocery store? What kinds of things would that person put in their cart? What would that person do when they first wake up in the morning? Would they scroll on their phone or would they take three deep breaths or do a five minute meditation? Would that person uh, say, you know, it's snowing, I'm just going to lay on the couch, I'm not gonna work out? Or would they pivot and do something inside, get on the treadmill inside or do a 20 minute workout video, something like that. So think about that. What is that, who is that person and what kinds of habits do they have in their life? And how can I embody that identity more? 
Okay, so we have covered a lot. You have some homework to do here. I want you to go back and spend a little more time on this process, starting with your health vision statements, setting those goals, and uh, then building that momentum, and then thinking about how you could turn those into habits. So quick review here, write that health, health vision statement. This is your destination. You have to know where you're headed as you set out on this journey. Number two, regularly set those SMART goals. So these are your stepping stones, very important stepping stones. Make sure they are specific, measurable, attainable and realistic for your life. They have a time element to them. And this is something that you're going to do week after week, okay? You're going to set different goals week after week. And it's also a good idea to take a moment to reflect. How did I do on last week's goal? And if you did great, great. If you didn't do so great, that's okay too. Think about why, you know, maybe, well, I said I was going to eat a salad every day before I ate my dinner, but I didn't go to the store. So I didn't have salad ingredients or I ran out of salad ingredients halfway through the week, or I forgot that I was had a dinner meeting for work or my kids had some sort of sports thing and we were going out for pizza and, I couldn't have a salad in those situations. So how can I redo that goal this year, this week and set myself up for success? So it's good to reflect and kind of think about how you can tweak things to be more successful the next week. Cause it's really all about that progress, building progress week after week. Number three is to turn your goals into habits. So how can you start memorizing that map that takes you to your health vision? So making sure that your goals and those stepping stones are very small, very doable, very easy to commit to memory or to commit to habit, making sure that they are anchored in the identity that you want to adopt, right? Because we can set goals and turn them into habits and then realize that that path is leading us somewhere we don't wanna go. Like the example of, I wanna spend more time, quality time with my family, but I set this goal and join this gym and now I'm spending an hour at the gym every day and I'm missing out on that time with my family. So how can I you know, realign so my path takes me where I want to go? So that is your goal setting homework. And before we close, I want to leave you with this. So for anyone who needs to hear this today, whatever it is that you want to achieve this year, I believe in you. And you can borrow my belief in you if you're having a hard time believing in yourself. I've worked with a lot of people over the years and there is nothing unique about all the people out there who have achieved whatever it is that you desire. You are just as special as they are. You have what it takes and I believe in you. So much for not just the presentation, but also the encouragement. I think sometimes it's easy when we are wanting to achieve a goal, a goal not to have specific or a vision, not to have specific enough goals and we kind of get lost along the way. So thank you for sharing the journey with us and the ideas with us. Absolutely, yeah. When we have that big, broad vision for ourselves, sometimes we forget that we need to then, you know, take a step back and start with these little tiny steps. And some people can be disheartened by that. Like, you know, eating a salad before dinner is not gonna get me, you know, where I wanna go, but actually it is, right? If we do that every day on repeat, then it takes you where you want to go. Excellent. I also loved how I loved how you had the reflection of what last week was and how you didn't say beat yourself up because that's a lot of times the route we tend to go. But what could I do differently this week to help me towards that? You know, being kind to yourself is a big part of that. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And and the idea of setting new goals for every week. I think it's something that we aren't taught or talk about very much. I think mostly we say, well, I set my goals for the year. I'm good. So again, getting so nitty gritty that every week you review your goals and you update them to make sure that it aligns with your vision and keeps you on the right path. 
I love that. Thank you for your presentation and thank you for be, being here with us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's a fun topic to talk about.